Hello everybody and welcome to episode 143 of the Knitting Nurse Podcast. My name is Jasmine and my pronouns are she, they. And today is Wednesday, October 9th, 2024. Every, literally every episode I recite like what episode number it is and the date and sometimes I still get it wrong or stumble and I don't know why. But I'm back with a new podcast. Uh, I have a brand new episode today. Last week I did not record because I had COVID. Again, if any longtime viewers have been keeping track, this was my third time having COVID in as many years. So very fun. No, I actually had COVID. My first time was late 2020. So yeah, third time having COVID regardless, uh, which is always fun. So <clears throat> I couldn't really talk for a long time. I was like running out of breath, just trying to talk to my friends. So I decided not to record a podcast last week, but I am back. I'm feeling a bit better. Um, I think my 10th day of like infection <laughs> was yesterday. So according to the CDC, I am cured and there's, I'm not contagious anymore and everything is fine. There's nothing to worry about, nothing to see here. Everything's fine. The pandemic is over, everyone. Remember, remember that. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so I am back. Um, I have a few fun projects to talk about. I have a couple of new projects to talk about. Um, I did finish something and I left it over on my desk. So there will probably be a little cut when, when I go to grab it. Um, but first I'm going to talk about my whips and then I'll talk about my finished, my one finished object at the end. Normally it's, I flip it backwards, but I don't feel like getting up right now. So first I did end up finishing my muscle bar hat. Uh, I didn't do the finishing work until I think over this past weekend because I was not at work all last week. So I just didn't really bother like getting any work knitting finished up or started or prepared or anything like that um, until the weekend. So I finished that hat and I needed a pair of socks. I really wanted to cast on a pair of socks this time um, instead of another hat. I do intend to knit two more muscle bras at least um, out of the other two skeins of the cozy knitter yarn that I have in my stash. But I really wanted some, I was really feeling some socks and I have some Halloween themed yarn in my stash that I really wanted to use up. So <clears throat> on Monday, I cast on these cuties. This is just the first sock, but I'm using my standard sock recipe. Um, all the details are on the project page for this sock, which will be linked in the description. But I do not use a pattern. I have my own sock recipe that I've developed for myself and I kind of adapt it for other people's, uh, for socks that I make for other people. But this is just a single skein project. Um, I'm not using any contrast colors. The yarn I'm using is from Hypnotic Yarn. This is my Yarnable yarn um, from, I think, last, yeah, last October. The colorway is called Spellbound. I really wanted to have a pair of socks to, um, just to celebrate Halloween. I'm not really a Halloween person. I know, gasp, uh, egad. I'm not really a Halloween person. I, it's just never really hit for me <laughs> it, personally. So, I've never been that into it, but I wanted, but I like, I don't know, everyone else loves it. So I have a bunch of Halloween themed yarn from my Yarnable boxes in the past. So I decided to cast on a pair of Halloween socks. So this is what the yarn looks like caked up. I forgot to take a photo of it um, when it was still on the skein. I really want to start taking more photos of my projects, even if I don't post them to Instagram or anything. It's just nice to have a record of what's going on and when for Ravelry, especially for all of you. If you want to look at my project pages, it's nicer when they're not all blank. <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, I have knit probably 25 ish rounds. So this first marker is just marking where, um, the end of my toe is and where I need to start counting rounds for the foot. So these two markers count as like 10, 10 rounds each. So I've done about 50, you know, about 25 rounds total for the foot. So I'm almost halfway there. Hopefully by next week, I will have the foot done and at least getting started on the heel. I've been trying to um, knit a little bit faster because 
I know that a single pair of socks takes me a little longer than a month and I cast these on uh, a little late. I cast them on on Monday. So I'm running a little behind with these. So I don't, I don't know if they'll be done by Halloween, but I am just kind of like knitting like the wind and hoping that they will be. So I'm going to throw my little progress keeper on here. All right, I put my little progress keeper on here. This just has the rest of my stitch markers. And then this one, um, it's made out of a charm that I found at Walmart of all places in their craft section. Um, and it's just a little gummy bear. It's a little blue gummy bear. Keeps wanting to flip backwards. I think I'll put it on backwards, but it's a little blue gummy bear. Um, the, the whole set was candy themed. So I have a blue, a green, a yellow, and a pink gummy bear. Um, I have a few little lollipops and then I got two of these like little gumball machine things this is just left over from my muscle burrow that was in this bag <laughs> so I didn't put this in here I just didn't clean out this bag before I put a new project in bad 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 knitter I know I'm terrible at cleaning out my project bags for knitting and cross stitch um and just like kitting everything down and putting things away I'm really bad at it all right, next um, is a whip that you have seen before. I think I started it. Let me double check and make sure there's no, make sure there is a progress keeper on here. You know what? You might not have seen this before. Huh, interesting. Okay, so you might not have seen this before, um, which which means this would be a new project, but this is, there's some tweed on there. This is my traveler hoodie. So if you remember, I think the last episode I was talking about how I was um, just like thinking about, or maybe already in the process of ripping out my pink fizz that was knit with this yarn before, uh, just because I was not really happy with how the yarn was pooling with that pattern in particular. I don't mind this kind of spiral pooling on a garment, um, but I didn't really like it for the lace. Uh, was like just like how it was turning out on the lace, and I felt like I needed, I wanted something a little bit more, um, I guess even or scattered. If it was like a little more variegated, kind of like um, how the color on the socks are a little more scattered and like just more random and more, I guess, consistent, evenly spaced, um, versus kind of just like the spiral pooling. Um, but I do really like it on something a little more casual, which would be this hoodie. So I cast this on. I worked on this a lot while I was sick, <clears throat> honestly. And I'm just using the exact same yarn. I have, I think I'm on my second skein of the Surrey Alpaca. <clears throat> and um, my gauge is exactly the same. Um, it's literally just stockinette and reverse stockinette striped, but it looks... With the texture, I think it looks really good and it makes the colors in the yarn a lot more, I guess, consistent and like even looking, um, especially from a distance. I think this looks so gorgeous from a distance. I'm so excited to be able to wear this. Um, and I did not have to cast on with, I think this calls for, Andrea Mowry usually uses a tubular cast on for her garments, but I hate, I hate doing a tubular cast on with, I mean, I hate doing a tubular cast on anyways, but I especially would hate it with a fluffy yarn like the Sorry Alpaca. And my yarn is held double with a, with like standard wool lace weight. And this is a, this is like a two by two rib. So there's like extra steps you have to take to set it up. And I don't think it really looks that good. So I just did a regular stretchy, regular stretchy cast on. Um, that's the only off pattern adjustment I have made on this. I do intend to make this a little bit longer. Um, I think I'm going to make it about an inch or so longer and then I will wash and block the body before I split the front and back. Um, and then, you know, just to make sure that it's the length that I want it to be, I'll compare it to a couple of other sweaters that I have that I really like wearing before I do this. Because I know in the, um, I know in the sample it is slightly cropped, but I want mine to be a little bit longer, just cover up a little bit more of my torso because I want it to be warm and cozy. 
So the yarn I'm using is exactly the same. I actually I even have the like front the I guess this is the back panel of ribbing for look at how much this stretches out. Uh, this is the back panel of ribbing for my pink fizz and it's this long. This I mean the sweater had a lot of positive ease as does my hoodie and I do intend to make a hood for this um and then I think for the string for the tie I'm just going to find like some scrap yarn a scrap like superwash merino or even a cotton that is contrasting with this that I think works well and then I'll just you know knit an eye cord or something I don't know what the pattern calls for but that's what that's what I see a lot of like hoodies and uh, drawstring bags that are knit and crocheted use. So my I guess my main color uh, is this Surrey Alpaca from Artemis Yarns. So this is from her this is the full main color main colorway from her Iris Advent from last year. And it is called Skainbow. I am using the Artemis uh, Baby Surrey Lace base. So it's basically the same weight and gauge as like a silk mohair but it has Surrey alpaca instead um and the main reason why I chose Surrey alpaca is because I find mohair to be a bit scratchy and I have sensitive skin as it is and I think I'm allergic to mohair every time I work with it I have to take like an extra Zyrtec or a Claritin or something because it makes me sneeze and really congested even showing it off on camera I'm like sniffling the whole time but with, sorry, alpaca, I'm not allergic to alpaca. I've knit with it multiple times before without any issues. And the sorry alpaca is fuzzier and the fibers kind of get everywhere, but it doesn't make me like, it doesn't make my eyes itch or like my nose run the way that mohair does. So I'm switching over to the sorry alpaca. I have some bare, um, I think I have a bunch of bare, like, uh, kid mohair from, Oh, from Knit Picks that I'll probably end up just de-stashing. I think all the other fluff that I have in my stash is Surrey Alpaca, which is nice. Um, and then I'm holding that alpaca double with just holding it together with just a plain undyed uh, lace weight um, yarn. This is a, I think it's just a fine merino, um, non-superwash merino two ply lace weight this is the knit picks shadow lace um just undyed i have two skeins of this and then five five skeins of this the reason i bought five even though i knew or initially what i was buying it for the reason i bought five of these is because i <clears throat> on her website i was looking at the wrong base she has two sorry alpaca bases one of them is like a sport weight and the other one is a lace weight or no, it's not a sport weight, but it's heavier. One of them is, is significantly heavier than the other. And I was looking at the heavier weight when I was buying um, these yarns. So I bought one extra skein just in case, even though like I figured I would barely have enough. I didn't want to try knitting like a lace, uh, something that's like lace heavy or cable heavy and end up not having enough yarn for the project and having to like figure something else out don't like figuring things out I'd rather just them work out like I intended so I bought an extra skein just in case and it's working out for me because I have plenty of yarn to knit the hoodie with the hood um in the size that I want which is exactly what I wanted <clears throat> um I think oh yeah I know what it is so I have a lot of I have like super long tails that are getting kind of tangled and caught up <laughs> with the like main bit of yarn here and that is because because this is so variegated and the variegations are so long um it's literally like you know i don't know the it's hard to explain but the variegations are very long on this so i have to plan when i'm going to um like transition into the next skein so i have this super long tail here that i have to cut uh, of the new skein because I had to like pull out a bit to get to the part um, to get to like the part in the variegation where I was at when I was when I ran out of the first skein. Oh, so yes, this is where I'm at right now. I don't think I have 
it's not attached to either of my yarn cozies so I'll have to find one I don't have a progress keeper on this um and I don't think I showed this off at all because I don't see one anywhere on this project um and then this stitch marker is just because I mismeasured and I thought that this was um, a certain length so I was like counting how many repeats until I got to the length that I needed but this is this is the length that I think is called for in the pattern of the body and I just need to knit um, like another inch or two which is like I think only a couple of repeats in the row gauge that I have <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and just break that lace and I'll just throw this away because it's not really enough to use for anything so yeah, that is my Traveler hoodie. I'm very excited. I haven't worked on it very much uh, lately because of the MCAL. So it's something that's kind of like a little more on the back burner. I do plan on recasting on the Pink Fizz sweater. Um, I have yarn mostly picked out. I still have to gauge swatch just to make sure because the weights are slightly different. Um, but I think that it'll work out. So I have to gauge swatch with the new yarn that I plan to cast it on with. And I think I'm going to just cast it on as my birthday sweater this year. Um, I didn't really know what I wanted my birthday sweater to be this year, but I think it's going to be the pink fizz again. <laughs> so I am kind of excited. I'm really nervous. I've been avoiding swatching because I'm afraid that I won't have enough yarn because for the main color that I'm using that I want to like show off, I, I'm not sure if I've, I'm like, I'm hoping I have enough, but I'm not hundred percent sure. So I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm nervous and I'm afraid that I might have to use more or less yarn or make like multiple swatches and like waste my yarn, so to speak. Next whip is something that I know you all have seen before because there is a progress keeper on here. Um, this is the Weekender sweater by Andrea Mowry, right? There is a progress keeper on here, right? Yes, there is. So this is the Weekender sweater by Andrea Mowry. I'm literally in the middle of a row here. Um, and this, I think, was a project that I originally pulled out to work on while I was moving because I needed something pretty mindless and I was still knitting the body of this sweater. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Um, but recently I was looking at it and I was thinking, well, this, like, it's a worsted weight sweater and I think that I can get it done, um, in a relatively short amount of time compared to like a fingering or a sport weight sweater. So I pulled this out and I was working on, I was working on it with the intent to finish it without putting it away again. So last time you saw this, I was down here where my little valentine's cookie marker is and i've knit the entire length of the body that is called for um i like i basically just held held it up to where i think the like i just held it up to where the armpit should be where it looks like it is on her and i like the length so i stopped there i think it's around where um the pattern tells you to stop anyways and i started splitting for the front and back which is why I have only half the stitches on my needles <clears throat> so the weekender sweater um I think they, they're very old Andrea Mowry patterns and the format has been updated um for to like her more modern format but the construction is something that I do not love especially the neckline I do not like that neckline Ugh, oh my gosh <clears throat> it's a boat neck um, and I was, and my original plan was to knit the body and then find another pattern with a, <clears throat> with a drop, with a drop shoulder scoop neckline and just find the numbers that worked for like the stitches that I had, just find the numbers that worked for the size I was knitting on this and then follow those decrease instructions for, um, like that other sweater. And lucky for me, Andrea Mowry, between like buying this pattern and casting this on initially when I cast it on years ago and, um, and now being able to split for the front and back, Andrea Mowry released 
a crew neck version of her weekender. It's a DK weight. So the sizes and numbers are a little bit different, but I just found what was closest. I think I increased. Yeah, I cast on three stitches on either side of the armholes <clears throat> just uh, just to get to the numbers that I need. Um, and then it'll kind of just be, you know, a little armhole gusset uh, on the that I'll create on the front and back. So not a huge deal. My the arms are going to be a little bit bigger and I'll kind of just fudge the decreases to get them to the stitch count that I need them to be um, in the weekender pattern. So that is what I'm doing. I'm just knitting basically the, you know, like this portion, like up until casting off or binding off for like the very front of this neckline. And then I get to do the shaping for the front and back for like the two shoulders. And then I followed the same instructions for the back. So that is something that I'm working on. I have the Weekender crew pulled up <laughs> with like all the instructions and all the numbers that I need highlighted. So that is all set up and I'm just doing more knitting. The yarn I'm using for this is a yarn that I bought from Hobie uh, back when they did like super cheap or I think even free shipping uh, way back when back in like 2020 or something. There's like a little bit of debris in the yarn. So <clears throat> this is their tweed delight. Uh, this is just like their undyed neon tweed base. So worsted weight single ply which makes me a little nervous. But this is 85% wool, 10% acrylic, and 5% viscose. So the actual, I, so yeah, it's basically, there's some acrylic mixed in there. Um, and after years and years of sitting around and being moved and like knitting and touching and like moving it around, um, there isn't, I haven't noticed any like fuzziness, any pilling, especially at the bottom or anything like that. So I think that this yarn is going to work out. It's just something that I'm going to have to hand wash and just be a little more gentle with when I'm wearing it, um, which basically means it's it's probably going to be a more special occasion sweater. I would love to make another Weekender. I'll probably just get DK weight yarn and make the Weekender crew from the jump. But I really want to make another Weekender or two as like more ca like more casual, uh, more durable type sweaters like it kind of just like an everyday sweater in a sense so this one is a little bit more special which is why I was like tossing it up for, as a contender for my Christmas sweater this year and I do really want to finish this this month but we will see I'm not 100% sure if that's going to happen especially since I've only just started splitting the front and back um and I'm, I'm looking at the amount of yarn that I have and I'm getting a little bit nervous, um, but I think that it's going to work out once, once I have like the vest part of the sweater like done and all attached, I should have at least a few balls of yarn enough to make the sleeves. Whew, I'm really hoping I have enough for the sleeves. I mean, this is undyed, so I'll probably try and get a couple of extra skeins from Hobie. I'm pretty sure they still have this base in stock. <clears throat> so I'll probably try and get a couple of extra skeins if I feel like I'm going to run low um, and just like wait until they get here, which will push back my finishing date and I won't finish it by the end of this month, which it'll be fine. And I can just kind of blend the, the new skeins um, in with the old ones if they are very different. But this really looks like just undyed yarn with tweed, with the neon tweed nips in there. So this is what my weekender is looking like so far. Um, I think I'm knitting a size four in the original weekender pattern, which is like 50 inches or something, something along those lines. <clears throat> and it looks pretty big <laughs> right now. Um, it is a non super wash wool as far as I can tell. So I believe this is backwards. Uh, it's a non super wash wool as far as I can tell. So I believe <clears throat> um, it's not really going to grow too, too much, especially since there is some acrylic mixed in there. I really think the acrylic is helping to keep it all together. And it is a high twist. I'm just, I just get really nervous with like 
anything heavier than a fingering weight that's a single ply makes me kind of nervous because I'm afraid it's going to just like fall apart and unravel and just like pill and felt um, all over the place, especially since it's a non super wash. But we will see. <clears throat> this is going to go right back in the bag. And I don't know when I'm going to pick it up. I'll probably pick it up. Well, I know when I'm going to pick it up. I'll pick it up as soon as I'm done with this section of my next project, <clears throat> which I have got to talk to you about. Um, but I think I'll talk, actually, I think I'll talk about this last and I'm going to grab my finished object. Okay. <clears throat> so over the weekend, I fully finished my Muscle Burra hat. Uh, this is a pattern by Isolde Teague. It is a like reversible, it's a reversible beanie. So you cast on at one crown and you knit all the way across, like double the length of the hat that you want and bind off, finish up at the other crown. So it kind of, it basically just folds into itself. So you have a double thick beanie. The last time you all saw this, I was down here and I was not sure if I had enough yarn to finish it. And I, in fact, did not. I don't know what happened um, when, you know, with like my yarn amounts because it worked out the last time, but it did not work out this time. Uh, so I did end up having to use the contrast color that I used down here for the brim just to finish off this second crown. So this crown is just going to stay on the inside when I'm wearing it. I took off all of the other markers besides the progress keeper just so I could show you all where I was. Um, and the way that I knit this, <clears throat> I used my main color for most of it and then for, I kind of made a brim, so to speak, uh, out of the contrast color because I had quite a bit of it. And I did a one by one rib down at the brim and it does I did it like kind of on both sides so it does fold up if I really want it to and my hair is flat today so I can put it on oh and it looks so good <laughs> I think it looks so good um I do plan on doing stuff with my hair so that it's not my hair is not going to be big and fluffy for much longer is what I'm saying um but <laughs> It's like a really saggy beanie, which I love. It fits so nicely. It like covers my ears perfectly so I can listen to headphones, listen to music in my headphones, my earbuds, um, without anyone like knowing or anything. And my ears still stay nice and warm. And if I want to pull it down even further, I can fold it up. I can fold it up and it'll be like a quadruple thick brim with kind of just like a matching lining on the inside. And I think it looks super cute. I think it looks super cute. I'm so happy. Oh, so yes, that is my muscle burra hat. I'm so happy with how this turned out, even though I didn't have enough yarn to finish it uh, of my main color. I did I did have enough yarn to finish it. So I'm very happy. I know what my numbers are for the next two. Um, and I really love this colorway. So I didn't even talk about the yarn. The yarn I used, um, I don't have any more of this, but the yarn I used is from the Cozy Knitter Yarn of the Month Club. I was in her club for a few months, like a couple of years ago, I think. <clears throat> I only got four, four colorways from her. This was one of them. This was February's Yarn of the Month. Uh, it's called New Beginnings. So the main color and the contrast color, it's like a New Beginnings sock set. <clears throat> um, and I think I have a little bit, like, a, I don't know, like five or six grams left of this color, the contrast color, and then I have none of the main color left over. So that is exactly how I like to knit. Um, I do like having scraps most of the time just because it's nice to be able to add something a memory of my project into um into my scrappy projects like my scrappy blanket and stuff but if i don't have any scraps left over that also makes me really happy 
So I'm really happy. This one I am keeping. I gave the other hat that I made, the last muscle bra hat that I made to my girlfriend because she really likes hats. But I love this one. I'm really happy with how it turned out. So I'm keeping this. This is my hat. I just need to wash and block it. And then it'll be done. <sighs> okay. Next. <laughs> last. This is a new cast on. Um, it is... Stephen West, MCAL season, as many of you know, and I've been doing the MCAL almost every year for the last four years. Um, three years? Four years? I think the last four years. I did Slipstravaganza, but I was not an avid knitter at that time, so I did not participate while it was going on, but I have knit three Slipstravaganzas to make up for it. <clears throat> um, and then I think last last year's mcal i know yes two years ago 2022's mcal i think was the one that was kind of unpopular um i did not i ended up ripping by now and not finishing it and i used the yarn for something else so that was the one that i like purposely did not participate in because i was not happy with the design it just wasn't something that i liked so <clears throat> there will be clue one spoilers from this time until we move on to cross stitching uh to the, like the end part of the video so if you do not want to be spoiled skip to this timestamp right here if you do not want to be spoiled <sighs> okay <clears throat> now that all of the uh spoiler free folks are gone let me talk let me show you what i've done so um if any of you are participating or are not participating whatever uh, you may know this might look a little familiar. So this is what I've done of my MCAL so far. So I've done all three of my semicircles. Um, I have all the stitches on my needles because I just started the last section of Clue 1, which is the bubbles, I think. Um, so I did all three semicircles in like a couple of days. I did the garter stripes connecting everything. Um, it took me longer than I thought it was going to take me just because um over here I kept I was I don't know I don't know what was wrong with me I think I was just tired but I kept messing up uh this garter stitch section um at this end specifically I kept accidentally knitting one garter ridge of a color instead of two so I had to keep like ripping back like three or four garter ridges or like garter stripes in order to go back and fix it and it was just a mess. I was very frustrated. But this morning I pulled it out and I finished it and I started working on the bubbles. So I'm just kind of knitting back and forth um, until I have, you know, enough rows to actually do the finishing of those bubbles. And then clue one will be done. So that should, I should be able to finish that up today because the next clue comes out, clue two comes out tomorrow. I am working tomorrow and I picked up extra on Friday. So I will probably, I will probably, I will not, uh, certainly I will not be able to get around to um, really getting started in, on clue two until this weekend, which makes me a little sad, but it's okay. I'm not sure if I'll finish clue two by the time clue three comes out, but it's okay. It's fine. I don't have to worry. It's okay. It's fine. This was kind of a hefty clue one not gonna not gonna lie <laughs> I feel like it was a hefty clue one but um I will finish clue one by the time you know the next clue comes out which is nice so the yarn I'm using um I'm using my yarn for this I'm using KN yarns as both of my my main color and my contrast color so the pink yarn here is heart lollies this was um my very first like valentine's collection colorway I think I still have a few of these in the shop um actually on my Instagram uh when the when the yarn for the um for the MCAL was announced I did post on my Instagram a few color combinations that are available in my shop kind of just like mix and match and make your own MCAL kit so if you're still interested in joining in and you like some of these colors then you can go ahead the shop the link to my shop is down in the description. Um, and then the second color I'm using is called You Are So Good Looking. And it's this like really tealy color. So I really like this color combination. 
I love how it's looking. I think, especially with these uh, semicircles, like it kind of looks like watermelon and it's so cute. It, I think it looks so good. So I'm excited to see what the rest of this shawl is going to look like. And I'm excited to keep knitting more of it because I, I have never used either of these colors. Um, I haven't knit with either of these colors yet and I'm really happy with how they're knitting up and it's just making me really happy. And then for my mohair dare, um, I'm using this as my mohair dare. So this is a full skein of a kid silk mohair. I know. I only have the only kid silk mohair I do have. I lied earlier. <laughs> the only kid silk mohair I do have is from uh ooh, what is she on Etsy? Love and Speckles. Um I the only ones that I have are just like sets that I got from Love and Speckles. I think with the next set that I end up getting, I just will, I'll just opt out and not get the mohair. I'll just get the full skein cuz I do intend to buy the summer like the summer kit from her, but I just won't get the mohair this time. That I think was from the 2022 like Christmas festive kit that she had. It was all purple themed. So that was one of the mohairs that was in there. I don't think, and I used two, I used two of them out of the four for um, a test knit that I did earlier this year. Yes. Actually, I wonder if that test knit would, should be my Christmas sweater. That way I don't have to stress <laughs> about having a Christmas sweater finished because it is like kind of festive. I really like how it looks and it's like a nice fancy, fancy sweater. So that might end up being my Christmas sweater if I can't finish something by then. We're back. We're back. We're back. Um, I just have one yarn thing to talk about before we can move on to cross stitch and that is my Yarnable subscription. Um, I just kind of share these. If if me receiving it happens to fall around when I record, then I'll just share it. If not, I think last month I, it didn't like show up until the day after I recorded a podcast. So I just didn't show it off. I just opened it. So this is the October box. And if you get the Yarnable box and you do not, uh, and you haven't gotten yours yet this month, then look away. I'm going to be talking about it. So crinkle, crinkle. And I get the set. Um, I get the complimentary 50 gram skein, the tonal, and I get the main skein. Both of them are on the soft sock base. So I'll talk about the goodies first. Ooh, okay. So there's two, there's these two pens. They are adorable. And they're ballpoint pens or they're like click click pens I do kind of wish they were twist pens because I don't want to have to like squish these little guys but there's a ghosty and a little pumpkin so I'm always on the hunt for new pens I lose pens all the freaking time so it's nice to have obnoxious looking pens that are really hard to miss Ooh, what is this sometime okay so sometimes she does include food um, and like skincare and stuff. I don't think, I think I've eaten like one or two of the food items that were included just because a lot of the sweet things have nuts in them and I am mildly, it's not going to kill me, I am mildly allergic to tree nuts and I never got around to like letting her know that and to just not include it in my, um, in my order because it's not going to kill me. I usually just give it to someone else who I know is going to eat it. So it's whatever. <clears throat> so this is the card that just tells you what all is in here. Okay. So this is an animated facial mask. Oh, I see. So it looks like a bat on your face. So this is what the face mask actually looks like. I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not super into these kinds of face masks, but my sister is home alone with her baby, uh, a, like for most of the day. So I think she might like having some kind of like fun self-care stuff like this. So I'll probably give this to her next time I see her. <clears throat> Unmask your glow this Halloween with a bat shaped charcoal facial treat from my spa life. That's both spooky and soothing. Um, and then these pens add a touch of spooky charm to your note taking with an adorable ghost and pumpkin pen duo. 
perfect for jotting down ideas and details on your current work in progress. Nice. And then this last thing, this is edible. So enjoy an, uh, enjoy an enchanting custom hazelnut toffee from Homemade Toffee. It's a playful set yet sophisticated treat that's perfect for spooky season. So this is hazelnut. Ugh, so I can't eat it. <laughs> I don't think I'm really allergic to hazelnuts, but I really do not like how they taste. Um, by the way, people who are allergic to tree nuts are not, are often not allergic to all of them. Um, it's just like they, a lot of them tend to share, uh, like protein structures that cause the allergic reaction. So, so like a lot of people are allergic to like a couple of different types of tree nuts but not others so like i can't eat walnuts but i can eat pistachios for the most part <laughs> um and like among other things so i can eat hazelnuts but i really don't like them so i'm just going to give this to my sister as well so she's gonna get some gifts uh at the end of the month when i go see her or probably beginning of next month is when i'm gonna go see her actually all right, so those are the extra goodies. So now for the yarn. And the main skein comes in this little <clears throat> bag, so you can't really see what's inside. And then if you get the extra, it just comes open. So this one is called Boo Crew. And it's this like pumpkin orange, super cute pumpkin orange color. Um, and now, oh, it's upside down. Now they have, um, each month has like the month and year that, the yarn is for on the actual label so it's really nice it's really easy to keep track um i think ne I, next year i have a sock project in mind a year-long sock project in mind with yarnable so that's very exciting um and if you want to get yarnable for a year or for you know i don't know six months or every other month then you will know um exactly which yarn is which for which month if you're doing like a year-long project with them which is really nice so this one is called Witch Please, and it's so pretty. It's so pretty and so moody. Not something I would pick out for myself, but this is kind of why I like getting these kinds of like mystery boxes because it's usually, it's like this, it's something different every month. And it's often something that I wouldn't normally pick out for myself. So it's nice to have these kinds of things in my stash, just in case. All right, hopefully it was focusing. I think it was trying to focus on my glasses and not on the actual label. But these are going up in my stash. Now I can talk about my cross stitch. Cross stitching whips and no finishes, but there is one project that I am putting away. Um, I worked on it like all last month and it's time for her to take a little nap. So this project is called Eastern Beauty. It's a kit by Riolas. This is what it looks like. It's super, it's like a long skinny piece. Super long, super skinny, um, but it is gorgeous. It's of uh, a very long peacock. Um, I'm using all the kit materials. This is one of their wool acrylic thread kits. Um, they do have some six strand cotton kits. I have a few of those and then but they are, Riolis is kind of known for their like wool acrylic thread kits. Um, and they all come on these like really, let me grab one. They all come on these like really long bobbins, like multi-section bobbins. And it's just like one strand of this like, you know, I think as far as wool, it's like kind of a cobweb weight two ply wool acrylic blend because <clears throat> it's definitely lighter than lace weight I compared them <laughs> so it's closer to like a cobweb weight or a thread weight um but it's heavier than DMC it's like slightly heavier than one strand of DMC but it's not a lace weight yarn necessarily and the fabric is just the kit fabric it's I think it's a 14 count um like beige Ada so this is what I have done so far. I finished uh, the wing over here. I did a little bit more of this. Um, I didn't really do much more over here at all. And I brought 
this section almost down to where it ends and then I did a little more over here so this is what it's looking like so far I am almost a third of the way done with this um, I didn't quite get down to the bottom of the page before the end of the month which is fine I was getting a little like tired of working on this by then so it's always good I usually like keeping these kinds of projects out for about a month and then reassessing whether I want to keep working on them um, after that and I assessed and I decided that I was finished for right now so this is going to go back in my whip pile and um I'll pull it out another time Ho like I try to pull out most of my bigger whips at least once a year but it doesn't always happen so who knows when I'm gonna see this again right so next I have one of my monthly projects it is a new month believe it or not um so I worked on the monthly section or the October section of my uh natural world sal <clears throat> and I did finish October section so this is what it looks like um I am all the way down to the bottom I it's been a long time since I've worked one of these corner like these corner parts for the border and oh my gosh oh I have to go over I have to do it again over in December and it with the way that my birthday works out it might have to be that I will be working November and December in December just so I could get this done by the end of the year. So this is a stitch along from last year by Pixel Pixie Stitch um, and currently there's the beautiful biomes Sal by her uh, as her like annual stitch along. <clears throat> so I only did um, up here I only did January's piece last January and then I did not pick this up again so this year I decided in February I would start working each monthly piece like every month until it was done this December so I have a guaranteed finish this year this is stitched on a uh, one over two on a 36 count uh wood and wine linen by Mountain Air and the floss that I'm using I actually have it here with me the floss I'm using is from Dying for Cross Stitch and the color is called Dark Earth. And this is what it looks like. It's mostly like a deep tealy blue with this um, like grayish, this little grayish accent in there. And I think the way that it's turning out, I think it looks so good. It's not, it's like a really short variegation um, in the floss so it's not too distracting it doesn't split uh, especially the letters it doesn't really split up the back stitch or the letters too much um, but it does add a, that little bit of intrigue so it kind of looks like it kind of looks like water with some stones in it and then on this like beautiful pink fabric <clears throat> I think if I were to start this now I would probably pick a different fabric but at that time I didn't have much of a fabric stash so and I do think that it still looks good I would probably just pick a more rustic looking fabric <laughs> next time um, I'm not sure if I'm going I do have the beautiful biomes so I did buy it but I don't know if I'm actually going to stitch it anytime soon uh, we'll see if I do stitch it I will stitch it in like a sow format um, but we'll see how the whole thing looks and then I'll make a decision then okay and then that is it I did not work on I literally just finished the section yesterday so I did not get a chance to work on um my quick stitch iris stitching for this month so I don't have it here with me because it's still in its bag um but that will be the next thing I pull out and then I will decide what to work on for the rest of this month I do have an idea I have a couple of options <laughs> I do have an idea um I know there is the I think it's the Aurora Moon Sal uh that's going on right now um and I do have the Moon Phase Bell Pull pattern by Tiny Modernist so I'm I so I started it when I first bought it like years ago and I realized that I had my fabric oriented incorrectly and the stitching was literally going to like go off of the fabric if I kept going so I stopped 
and put it away because I was kind of frustrated with it. And now I'm trying to decide if I want to restart it on the same fabric because it's an 18 count Ada and I don't love working with 18 count Ada that much. I feel like I feel like two strands is too much and one strand is not enough and it's literally black, white, and a gray <laughs> for the colors. So I'm trying to decide what I want to do. Um, I did order I did order an undyed piece of 22 count hard anger because I like how one strand looks on that and I'm going to dye it kind of like a mottled dark gray um, is the plan with maybe a little bit of blue. I do plan on dyeing it. I do have some like fiber reactive dye um, that I plan to use. So I think I just have to find like a, a piece of scrap fabric now and run a couple of experiments and see what I want to do. Um, just to make sure that it works out. Cause I only bought the one like small piece <laughs> of hard anchor, um, to restart it on. So we shall see how it all works out. Um, I need to double check and look, I have one other project that is on 22 count hard anchor. That is my Pokemon gen one, like, you know, project. So I have to pull that out. It's a full coverage. So I have to pull that out and see what the coverage looks like with darker colors. But the fabric is also going to be pretty dark. So I think it's going to work out okay. Um, I either want it to be like a deep blue or like a grayish blue. Um, like a dark grayish blue modeled colorway. And I did learn how to dye fabric. <laughs> like the technique. I just have to try it and make sure it works out for what I want. So maybe I'll do that this weekend because um, I just ordered it from 123Stitch so that it should ship later this week. We'll see. I know with their, every time I order fabric from them re lately, um, it feels like it take, if I put fabric in my cart, it takes them like, it's an extra like three to four days of processing before they ship it out for some reason. I don't know why because they should have it all in stock, but with fabric, it just takes so much longer. <laughs> So I'm just, I'll, well, I'll, I'll see. We'll see. It'll be fine. Um, and that is it for today. This is a long episode because I was talking a lot. Uh, so thank you all so much for hanging out. I really appreciate spending time with you all and I will see you in the next one. Bye.